So I had planned on holding off on the 50 foot beds until I really perfected the compost that I want to use. And, and I, I clearly have it. Okay, check this out. All right, so you see everything is growing well in here. I got some um, variety of kales, lettuces. I got some Swiss chard. Everything is growing very well and it's some spinach. Um, but look at this. I just stick my finger in it, I can dig a hole. Look at that. It's the most amazing compost I've ever seen. All right, so I got plenty of moldy potatoes. They're all stemming, ready to go. Okay, so I have my first barrel and my second. It's got some ants in it, so I gotta be very careful with it. All right, that's gonna be for one cubic meter compost pile. This is uh, for a potato compost. Okay, so I have, um, I'm making three compost piles for potatoes. And, and I see this is potato compost, but it actually can be considered uh, any rooting crop, uh, radishes, um, whatever, beets, carrots, um, anything that's gonna grow underground. It's for very loose compost. There's no sticks in it, only two um, gorilla cart sizes of grass clippings. Uh, it's about a half a cubic meter. And so I got two. So I have a full cubic meter per pile of grass. All right, it's gonna get it roasting hot. The reason we wanna do that is because we wanna break down these, um, this manure and um, wood shaving mix. Okay, so this is gonna be split into thirds. Each pile is gonna get a third. All right, and I have another um, pile if I don't have enough because this was not measured, but this roughly, it looks like it's gonna need a little bit more. So I have another bag. So let me show you the wood shavings I have. My neighbor was in the hospital and he had, he's a master carpenter and he has tons of wood shavings, but he wasn't around for a couple of weeks. And so I, I went out and, and bought some pine shavings, but uh, it's, it's essentially the same thing he has. So you got wood shavings, I'm, I'm using these. I it cost about a $5. I'd rather not spend anything as my neighbor's just giving away, uh, but next time, but I have it already. So um, roughly one of these bags per, um, per cubic meter compost pile and I think I got um, two bags of manure, cow manure um, with that. So that's mixed. Now what I have done because these um, these wood shavings are extremely light and they will blow away even just by dropping them. What I've done is I've, I've done what I call priming them um, where I put them under for four days uh, with the manure mixed it up under uh, a tarp while I was waiting for the uh, grass clippings and uh, um, four days and then I turned it once for another two days so this is six days old it helps moisten it and that way I don't need to add any water because I don't want to get this grass wet all right it's already got moisture in it enough that it's going to get really hot and break down but I don't need any more I just didn't want it to blow away because uh, if you take that if you handle that stuff you see you just kind of open up a package and it's blowing everywhere so you see it kind of went all the way over there I try to clean up as much as I can so wetted it down, mixed it up with the cow manure, and uh, um, and then started the composting process. Like I said, let it sit for four days, and then I turned it once, two days later, we're here. So six, this is six days old, all right? And it, this alone, just with the manure and the um, wood chips, got quite hot, so, but now we're really gonna get it smoking with the grass. All right, now, some people put the um, woody um, material down on the ground first, I have found that my compost piles get earthworms if I put the green side down um, to, to begin. And I didn't even know there was earthworms here in Florida, but I started getting to the bottom la layer when I started adding the greens on the bottom, um, I get those earthworms and I, and I really like that. So it, it pulls them out of the ground, they really like this. Uh, also a lot of ants do and other insects come here and they will break it down a lot quicker. 
uh, they'll get that process started. So that's about one meter in diameter. And now by hand, I'm gonna go ahead, and I wouldn't do this if there's ants in it, but I'm gonna start to layer it around the top. Okay, you can do pitchfork, but pitchfork is gonna be a little tricky. It's gonna be falling through there because they're pretty fine shavings. Maybe it'll be okay, but I'm using my hands with gloves. All right, and there is my first layer of um, wood shavings and manure mix. Again, this is six days old. Uh, I got about two inches of grass. Now, this is not compacted. It's very loose, and this is not too compacted, six days old, but it's going to hold it down. It's not going to blow away. I was going to put the tarps on it, but that's where we're at, about two inches thick each layer, and I'm going to do it. keep repeating the process, grass, manure, and wood chips, or wood shavings, and so on and so forth until it's above my waist. So that's about up to my waist. Um, I kind of went around the bottom with my my hands and, and piled it up on the top towards the end. I got another left for um, one other pile. The other grass clippings I'm gonna use for something else. I'm gonna use regular wood chips for greens. I'm gonna make two, uh, I got three compost piles, but two in this method. All right, so it's starting to rain. <laughs> so let me uh, finish this one up. <clears throat> Obviously, you want to go along. Um, if you've seen in other videos, just kind of rake up the bottom or away from the uh, pile. Remove all of that. If you don't have any room, as you see, it kind of, it does, it's like a nice column. It's not bad. It's not my best. Um, it does start to get like a little conical at the top. Um, so you might want to start, like I do, a little bit wider at the bottom. And then, um, because if I know I'm going to end up a little narrow at the top, that way I don't get a full meter in. And uh, all of this here, these more grass clippings that were laying loose, I'm going to top it off with. It's a little mixed up, and I'm going to top it off with that. Okay, so it started to downpour there, but only lasts about five, ten minutes. Typical Florida weather. All right, so, all right, so then I wrap it up. Nice and neat for Christmas. Um, so I did not put any water on the first time because, like I said, this, these are already moist. I, I soaked these pretty good um, uh, when I was priming it, okay? So the grass has already got a, a lot of water in it, though it is a few days um, a few days old. We've been sitting on his yard, so it's a bit dry. I'll check it in four days. If it needs water, I'll give it a little spritz. All right, but I have run into the problem too many times of it going anaerobic, and uh, um, it just starts to... Uh, um, get a lot of the molds in it. So I keep it uh, um, on the drier side. I want it aerobic compost. Okay, so I had to cover up the grass clippings. I didn't want them wet. So um, this rain stops. I'm gonna continue with the second one is gonna be a potato compost as well. And I'm gonna leave this space here, move the chips over there, make two piles, two piles over here. And the third one is, um, cause I still have that other bag of um, wood chips i didn't have enough manure to mix it um, i have the other not wood chips wood shavings i'm used to use wood chips i am going to use wood chips for the last one these are largely decomposed wood chips and i will show that one too just at the end but largely i'm just doing the potato compost compost here there's gonna be two of them all right and i'll show how i apply it later one more thing so while everything was not compacted it will be compacted now so i'm going to lay a little bit of a stone, a brick on the top, um, that extra pressure, pressure aids in heat, you know, a little physics and chemistry, um, at the very least it's going to help keep that tarp on. All right, good. Then it's, now it's done. Okay, and there is my second potato compost uh, heap. All right, first and second. All right, so uh, it just occurred to me as I was finishing up the, the second one, I forgot to tell you how much manure is in in each of these so the berkeley method has certain ratios with by weight well guess what i don't have a scale around so i'm, I'm not using it but what i found is one cubic foot of cow manure so they usually sold in half cubic foot um, bags so i got two per pile so that'll give you an idea how much manure um, and then grass it's about um, two inches thick of grass in layers um, and about two inches thick of wood shavings with the manure until it gets about waist high. So about a meter high, um, you can figure that out. So more practical for me is, is I, you know, because I can't weigh things determined by my hands and I don't have a scale, um, I'm using at about, like I said, two, one cubic foot, which is two bags of cow manure. 
in this. All right, you can do more. There's nothing wrong with that, um, but that's what I'm using. All right, good. Costco would be proud. Okay, it's a cool September morning here in Southern Florida. Um, I have finished the uh, potato compost. When I say I did, the bacteria did. Um, I did miss one flip, um, but that shouldn't do anything else. Everything was right on time. We are right on schedule and that is looking really good. Now, there is a, a large amount of the uh, um, wood shavings that are not um, broken down to black, but I'm going to show you the difference, why why it's okay. All right, these are, you can tell a lot about the color. These are wood chips just laying on the top, or wood shavings, the same wood shavings you buy at the store. Um, what you're going to notice is the difference in the color, right? This is white, all right? So if you see in there, it's, it's very white, even if we were to wash it. Okay, it's, it's obviously covered in dirt. But there's a very different color in the, uh, um, the two. You see it's more golden. That's gonna be very acidic still, okay? So the rest should be broken down enough, decomposed enough to be very effective. And that will continue out throughout the year. But this is really good compost. This is gonna be nice. I feel the warmth. It's, it's a little warm still, but it's largely slowed down the process. Let's get deep and really feel that heat in there. Now what I do when I have two piles, um, I'm gonna bring the two together and then just cover it up until I get it all the ground. Yeah, it's, it's lukewarm. It's, it's certainly not 150 degrees. It is significantly slowed down. And as we put this on top of the soil, um, we put it on top of the potatoes and eventually we're gonna grow right into it in the future. So this is the traditional way of growing potatoes. You're gonna till and hill, right? And uh, it's effective, it really is. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. There are people have been doing it for, I don't know, hundreds if not thousands of years. And uh, it produces results. It also produces weeds. Okay, so you gotta weed about two every two weeks. And then I go through on the top, these are kind of just recently been planted so there's nothing coming up um i think these were just starting to come up a month ago or i planted them about a month ago maybe a month and a week and uh, um a little bit before we started the potato compost compost uh these bottles here um this is ants this is the other problem with leaving it all barren and sandy is just move ants in here so i got some uh, um uh, yeah i think it's working um there's a video i got online about that just mix a little bit of sugar and uh, boric acid in there, and they, they love it. They go in there and take it down to the nest and kill the, <laughs> the rest of the colony. So it's actually, it's, it's worked pretty good. I don't not, I haven't seen any ants here for a few days since I put it down. But yeah, it can be uh, very, very uh, um, distracting to kind of go through and be pull, walking around here and get ants crawling up your legs because they think it's their home. So the compost is going to help cut down on those weeds. And what I've seen, yes, ants do love compost, but they don't love it beyond a certain point. And I'm not really sure why. I think it has to do with there's something in the bacteria, there's something in the mold, something they, they don't like. So when I'm doing the compost, I've got about first couple weeks, the ants love it. They get in there and, and, and I have to be very careful in um, turning it because I don't want to get them all over me. And uh, I could easily pour, pour, put some, uh, um, some chemicals or something in there, but uh, um, I avoid the ants just for just for a couple weeks, and by the end of the month or the 21 days, 18 days, whatever it is, um, they're gone. They don't come back. They don't, they're not liking the fully decomposed um, material. Something in there, bacteria, something is, is not conducive for the ant lifestyle, so to speak. But there we have it. I'm now I'm going to take that compost. I'm gonna um, turn it one last time, but I'm not gonna recover it. And then I'm gonna stack the other one on top of it and I'm immediately gonna start putting it over the potato bed. Okay, so I wanna show what we're doing here. 
All right, so I left some of this exposed so you can see. So I'm laying it flat, okay? But the sand underneath, it, or the soil, we call it, they call this the soil down here, um, the sand, um, is still got its uh, tilling hills and all that. So I'm going to lay it flat and uh, um, spread it evenly, and it's looking really good. And then I am going to cut, um, uh, hose some grooves just slightly because it's going a difference between one inch thickness to six inch thickness and I'm going to kind of groove it hill it again um, that's largely just for definition so I can see where I'm working because obviously I, I will lose the uh, location of the uh, the potato plants beneath so right now I kind of walk over the hills right so um, that's what we're doing laying it flat even though the the floor beneath it is not flat Okay, and that completes the bed. So I kind of went by with my hand rather than the hoe. Um, to, I started it and it was getting a lot of sand, so I went over with my hand and just kind of went through it all the ants are out um, based on those uh, um, water bottles. I didn't get any ants on me at all, so it's three days. That's a really neat thing. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, but there are other videos out there how to get rid of ants from your garden if you need. Um, and they are, they are a pest. Anyone that says they're beneficial, they, they just haven't been bitten a thousand times. So, okay, look, um, so what we got is, this was my experimental bed. Um, I just wanted to see how they grow in, in Florida. I really like it. So the others, uh, I expect to come up very soon and hopefully I'll never have to disturb this bed again. So it's done, completed. It's got about, um, on average, three inches of compost on top of it. And the bed area, just to give you an example. So two one by one meter, roughly one by one meter um, compost pile. It gets one, you can do the math, but kind of because I have six inch valleys between, it's, it gets a little tricky. So I'm just gonna measure it for you. One, two, three, four, five, about five yards by one, two, three. Three by five yards, so you can do the math. I think it's about, on average, three. But like I said, it's deeper in the valleys. I tried to thin that out, but um, that's good, actually. I don't want, I don't mind it. Now, I water it, and we're gonna wash all that uh, compost tea down to the roots. Uh, typically, when I do the uh, um, water the compost, I am going to uh, put it on full in the areas uh, um, I want. So I'm going to really push that uh, those nutrients down. I'm not going to put it around the plants that are growing. I don't want to disturb it. I'm going to go around it, but. With that uh, nutrient density and, and the, the, the life that's in there uh, in the soil, um, the plants, the rows are a lot closer than, than I would do a traditional um, till and hill method. Um, so I should be able to grow them pretty close and I planted them pretty close. Um, so it should work out. There's plenty of room on this beach for visitors. <laughs> I hope this video helped. I got another coming, so like and subscribe to catch next week. Before I go, I wanna share something with you. I know firsthand the frustration that comes with spreadsheet garden planning and unreliable apps. That's why my son and I created the Garden Optimizer. It's a super simple tool with just four pages and accessible with four buttons. One page is your garden parameters, a second is for your climate parameters, and a third is for your crop definitions. But the real magic happens on the garden page. We took every measure to make the design of this page slicker and more convenient than any garden app out there. You can click on any given day of the year and the AI will show you what you should have in the ground and at what spacing. You can choose to plant rows or staggered for the best profits or the laziest lowest maintenance garden. And if you're late at any given task, just click a button to re-optimize and the AI will reroute your plan. But we want your feedback before release. To get involved, 
pause this video and go to gardenoptimizer.com. That's www.gardenoptimizer.com. Sign up for our newsletter and we'll contact you shortly. Until then, man up and grow.